Inside the Gates of Heaven, by Odin Hattrick. Chapter 18, The Chamber Mansion. Everyone who enters heaven has the same eternal life, but everyone does not have the same reward. In the resurrection we are changed in substance from physical to spiritual, but we are not changed in character. All that is required to enter heaven and obtain eternal life is to have our sins of disobedience washed away in Jesus' cleansing blood. If you want rewards and spiritual character, in heaven, you must while on earth add to your salvation, faith, a knowledge of unseen spiritual things. You must receive God's Spirit as your trusted guide and let Him teach you about Jesus and things to come. You must put off the old nature with its evil deeds and put on a new nature, that is like Jesus. And you must follow Jesus in humble service to mankind. Saints in heaven are different in glory, brightness and knowledge. Let me encourage you to love God with all your heart, obey His commandments and seek the face of God. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body, there is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. 1 Corinthians 15 44 If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Romans 10 9 Grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3 18 If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things that are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection, mind, on things above, not on things on the earth. Colossians 3 1 5 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8 14 How be I when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will show you things to come. John 16 13 Put off concerning the former life the old man, that is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, that in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and true holiness. Ephesians 4 22, 24 Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness and love. 2 Peter 1 5, 7 Glory in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. 1 Chronicles 16 10, 11 In the holy place we saw the crystal river, the tree of life and the streets of gold. We saw the city mansions, pleasant and delightful and not too different from earth. We also saw that the saints there are a lot like people on earth. But the mansions, beings, saints and clothing you are about to see, here in the most holy place, will be very different. These saints live close to the bright throne of God and they are dressed in light so bright that you can see them only if you are one of them. The saints who live in city mansions see the saints who live in this temple as very bright lights. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that those who rise from the dead on resurrection day, or those who remain alive and are changed in the twinkling of an eye, are as different from each other in glory and brightness as the sun, moon and stars are different from each other in earthly brightness. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. Daniel 12 3 There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. 1 Corinthians 15 41 42 so now if you really desire with all your heart and soul to be near to God, come with me. The first time I entered my chamber mansion in the wall of the temple, I knew not where I was. It seemed as though I was entering into a scene beyond the realm of human existence, a scene containing objects of adornment and beauty far surpassing such familiar things as flowers, trees, clouds and rainbows. The light in this ecstatic domain was so bright and powerful it was not stopped by my body and I had no shadow. I feared to go any further lest I be consumed by the piercing brightness of the light.
Three different times the Spirit of God tried to show me this hallowed place, but my spirit was too weak. Finally, being strengthened by the Lord, I was taken into a scene difficult to describe. Having nothing to compare, I shall begin my description with what I call a flower. It had a stem about two feet high that resembled a clear plastic drinking straw. This was topped by a sparkling red ruby two inches in diameter. From this red ruby center there extended three petals fourteen inches long, made of solid shimmering diamond. These petals were one quarter of an inch diameter where they joined the ruby center and tapered with straight sides to a needle sharp point. Then I noticed that everything was made of a substance like pure glass or crystal and that each object reflected all the colors of the rainbow in a pattern all its own. Blended with these colors I heard music, and my attention was directed to a little brook of sparkling crystal water as the source of the music. As I started toward this musical water, I became conscious of a glorious rapture filling and thrilling my soul. I was blending with the surrounding atmosphere, and was in harmony with the music from the little brook. Looking through the water to the bottom of the brook, I discovered the source of the music. Precious gems were placed in symmetrical positions so that music was produced by the water flowing over them. Suddenly I noticed two strange human beings as clear as glass, and I was very much startled by the presence of these other world beings. That they had not noticed me was a slight relief, so I gazed with wonder and amazement at these two strangely beautiful beings, one masculine and one feminine. They were as smooth and transparent as clear glass, yet they appeared to reflect light like silver. They moved in unison like soldiers marching and were perfectly in place and at home in their surroundings. Then they noticed me, and I suddenly felt as out of place as a pig in a parlor. I wanted to turn and run, but the Holy Spirit, my guide, made me face the sad fact that I was an unworthy inhabitant of this celestial abode in my present sin-marked body. But I know that someday I will have a glorified body like Jesus, and that this was a vision of my future state with my covenant companion in our chamber. The word tabernacle, a name for God's house, means a clear shining home easily seen from a distance. So also a chamber in the most holy place of heaven is a clear shining home easily seen from a distance. This chamber is about 12 feet high, 24 feet wide and 216 feet long. The garden we first visited is toward the back of the chamber. At the front of this chamber is a living room. The walls look like soft clouds with rainbow colors upon them with ever-changing and blending hues. There is a very large couch-like piece of furniture. It is bright white and looks like a big ball of cotton. It quickly and easily conforms to, or changes with, any sitting or reclining posture. Very comfortable. The entire front wall is an open window. Through it we can see or enter into the most holy place and its activities. This most holy place is a round area about 300 miles across and about 1,000 miles high. The throne of God and of Jesus is at the top west side, facing east. From this position the Lord can easily see all the city mansion chambers, because they adorn the face of the inside of the wall of the temple. So also the saints in the chambers can easily see God on his throne and Jesus at his right hand. And they will see his face, and know his name. Revelation 22 4 Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. Isaiah 33 17 The chambers are in rows or stories reaching two-thirds of the way around the inside of the temple wall from the left side of the throne to the right side of the throne. There are 144,000 chambers in one row and 288,000 rows. Our chamber is over 800 miles above the courtyard garden and toward the left side of the throne. In heaven, distance does not make things look small. Although they are earth miles away, they seem to be magnified or enlarged as though spiritual eyes contained telescopes like the eye of an eagle. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 105. The entrance of your words gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. Psalm 119, 130. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, 
They are spirit, and they are life. John 6 6 3